Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I had a thought and I want to try it today. And I want to make a fall mold or a fall clock using this mold. However, I want to try something a little different, something I've never done before. So the first thing I did was I just mixed up a couple ounces of Let's Resin's Epoxy Resin and I'm just putting it in this mold clear because I want to do a design on it. Now, in order to do it, I'm going to have to do this backwards, which is what I've never done before. And I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work out, but we're going to try. And I am taking my dotting tool and I am just kind of going along all of these um, embellishments and the dips and all of this stuff in this mold just to make sure that any bubbles that are trapped there I am pulling up to the surface and then hitting it with my heat gun to pop all of those bubbles and then we're gonna let this cure all right so 24 hours later and here we are now I like these stencils and I think that they'll look kind of cool on this clock but obviously they're too big, so I need to cut them down to size. So I just selected a couple of leaves and this acorn out of this one. And then I really like these kind of three pumpkins from the other one. So we're going to cut that one down as well. And what I want to do is I want to have these in the foreground. And then I'm going to do some glitter or something along the kind of like the top and the bottom where the feet are of this clock and then we're going to do our back so it's kind of going to look in, in my head anyway this is the way it's going to work where i'm going to have these images kind of popping out on front and then it's going to look like it's got two layers in the back so in order to do this i am going to take some of my gloss varnish and i'm putting it in with a little bit of mica powder. Now my thought process is I kind of want to go with different metals for my stencil. So I am going to use a combination of bronze, copper, rustic gold, and antique gold in this kind of just to sh have some color variation in it is, is what I'm thinking. And then build from that because they are all kind of the fall color scheme. Silver obviously wouldn't go too well, in my opinion, anyway. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I am going to apply this kind of like you would paint on my stencil. Now, I am working very, very hard to kind of keep this inside of the stencil. In hindsight, I, I should have used some spray adhesive. Maybe that would have worked better. I've never tried it before, but I probably should have done that seeing as I have some, um, but I didn't. So yeah. Anyway, this is the part where everything just goes wrong here. Now I think I'm doing a great job keeping it in. I don't have my mixture too liquidy, so it, it really isn't running or anything that I, I know of anyway. Unfortunately it is. And it goes all over the underneath. Now, gloss varnish isn't exactly super duper easy to clean up, but it can be done with some alcohol. I just, in order to get the lines and stuff, even a Q-tip, it just wasn't working. So I decided to scrap that whole idea to an extent, clean it off with some alcohol, make sure I've got all the coloring, all of that gloss varnish off there. And we're going to try and freehand these stencils as much as possible. Now, I can't draw, so the way these pumpkins come out, honestly, I'm pretty impressed with it because they actually kind of sort of look like pumpkins. But I am using, for the most part, the stencil kind of to copy as much as possible onto the resin. Now, the other thing that you don't necessarily notice, and you're going to see me doing it a lot in this video, is it looks like it's solid from the vantage point that you have now like as far as me putting down the micas in this way but when you lift it up to the light there's a lot of light that shines through and I'm worried that if I don't cover it up completely and make sure it's completely opaque that my color whatever color I choose for the background is going to pop through and I don't want that so when I'm lifting it up I'm just kind of hitting it against the light that I have behind me so that I can see if I can see through it. And if I can see through it, I'm going to go back over those areas and just kind of make it a little bit thicker 
just so that light isn't showing through. Anyway, so as I do this, I'm going to pop off here and I will be back when we get ready to do the next step. are falling all around colors cover in the ground jumping in a pumpkin patch smiles wide and hearts attach sweaters cozy crisp and bright he rides in the chilly night sipping cider holding hands dancing in the golden winds on a final can't you see laughing under Pumpkin patches fall to light Hearts so warm, the world feels right Bonfires lighting up the sky Moonlit nights go running by Crunching leaves beneath our feet Magic moments oh so sweet Twilight falls, the stars appear Whisper secrets in your ear Nature show a sight to see Lost in autumn's melody Autumn fun, oh can't you see Laughing under maple tree Pumpkin patches fall to light Hearts are warm, the world feels right Right. Song 
flowers standing tall under the autumn sky. Pumpkins in every patch, it's fall and we feel alive. Family laughter fills the air, he rides through fields of gold. Wagon wheels rolling slow, these moments never get old. Fields of sunflowers and pumpkins, golden leaves and fun. In the fall breeze, we are whirling together as one. Children's voices echo. Okay, I'm back. So here's another hindsight night. for you. I should have, and my husband brought this to my attention. I really should have outlined each one of these images with something uh, whether it be some type of a paint pen or something just to give them a little bit more definition because in the finished product you do kind of lose some of it like it looks great here but there's nothing kind of distracting you at this point yet now, what I decided to do is because I want something, I don't want it to just be a clear clock and I don't want it to just be kind of like it is with just the background color. So I decided that I'm going to use this kind of, it's a very fallish kind of burnt orange, ultra fine hollow glitter. And I thought that it would kind of go with what I have in mind and it would go with the metals and just kind of that whole fall vibe. I, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. But I also maybe don't love it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it looks okay. You guys are just going to have to wait and see the finished piece and let me know what you think. I feel like, personally, it's missing something. I just, I'm not sure exactly what aside from the outline of the images but anyway so i just took the gloss varnish again and i mixed it in with my glitter like i have done many many times in the past and i'm just going over that top piece of the clock and then the feet of the clock where all of like kind of like the designs and the ribs and all of that stuff are just to make it stand out a little bit more and any of the like the acorns or the leaves or the pumpkins or whatever that are kind of going down into that area, I am going to cover with glitter so that it looks like it is sitting on top of it as opposed to not glittering it at all. This way, I I'm hoping that it will help give it some dimension. So I'm going to finish this up and then we're going to let this dry overnight. Now, typically gloss varnish doesn't take that long to dry. However, in this case, because I am packing it on and I am using it in, you know, really thick layers, we're going to let it dry overnight because we don't want any moisture in there. And it can take hours and hours and hours to dry when you are kind of loading up on it like I am here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come back in 24 hours and we are going to put our background color on it and see what happens if this is going to work out how I want it to or not. Okay, so 24 hours later, here we are. This is all nice and dry. Now, if there was any glitter that was kind of on the mold, I just got some tape and I pulled it off with the tape just to make sure that it's not going to be where I don't want it. And I did mix up about six ounces of Let's Resin's Epoxy Resin. And then I chose yellow to go in the background. Now, you'd think that these colors look really nice together. And I think that they do. I just think that maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just not super happy with how this turns out at all. Now, of course, me being me, I didn't mix up enough resin. And because I've... And just too lazy to figure out how much it holds in water. And I just don't want to be bothered to do that. I have never figured out how much the entire mold holds. And I've never done it in less than like two or three layers. So, I don't know. 
But I need to make up another couple of ounces of resin just to finish filling this up the rest of the way. Now I did go around all of my edges and all of that and around that circle in the middle with my dotting tool just to make sure that there's no bubbles stuck there. I'm going to hit it with the heat gun real quick and then I'm going to mix up the last couple of ounces of resin, fill this mold up to the top. We're going to let it cure and you guys are just going to have to tell me what you think of it. Because I really, really, I just, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm really not. All in all, like, I like the idea of it. I, I'm not sure that I necessarily picked the right colors. Maybe I should have done something different. And again, I really should have done the whole outlining thing on there. I didn't think it would make as much of a difference as it really did. But, alright, so... Here we are 24 hours later. Let's unmold this and you guys can let me know what you think. All right, here we go. Now see, it, it like, it has potential. It has potential. I don't know. Maybe the yellow wasn't the right shade yellow. It definitely, I don't think necessarily the metals and that yellow it's not that they don't work well together. I just don't think that there's enough of a, a color difference, I guess, that you can really, like, see. Like, they don't just, like, kind of pop out at you, if that makes sense. And that's what I wanted. Now, to get that, I could have gone white or something like that, and they would have really popped there. But I wanted it to be more fallish, not just in the images, but the color, too. So, I don't know. I'm going to put a face on this and then show you guys the glamour shots. And that's a wrap on this one, guys. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I will catch you on Thursday in the next one. Love you. Bye. Keeps me reason to cheer